everybody and welcome back to another video so this is going to be a bit of a strange one it's one I've been saying I'm going to film for a while and then just haven't mainly because I really don't enjoy filming the sit down videos they're harder to plan they're harder to find the time to do and they're harder to edit so I've been wanting to do my top 10 DIY wedding tips for a long time but I just kept putting it off because I didn't want to do the sit down video. So today I decided that, well, I just won't do it as a sit down video. I'll give you my top 10 tips while I'm out and about. I'm currently walking the puppy on my lunch break. So yeah, let's get started. Obviously because of the way I'm filming this, it might seem like a bit of a disjointed video because there will be some clips filmed here and then there'll be some clips filmed at home just as and when I've got the time to jump on but I hope they'll still be helpful. My experience will be different to everybody else's who's done things DIY for their wedding because obviously there's lots of different levels of a DIY wedding. You could do absolutely everything yourself. You could do just the minimum or like me, you could be the sort of in-between range where I've done any of the sort of crafting side of it, all of the stationery, the favors, a lot of decorative bits but all of the main things I haven't made myself. But I'm gonna give you my tips on things I've learned along the way and hopefully it'll be helpful to some of you out there. Tip number one, and this is one that I have definitely learned thanks to COVID mainly. Be prepared to change your mind and change it again and change it again. If you have an idea for something that you want to DIY for your wedding, be prepared for the fact that that idea might change, it might completely change, it might just vary slightly, you might decide you absolutely hate it and then a few months later decide you absolutely love it again. So put your ideas down on paper, draw them out if that helps, create mood boards, but really think about them before you start them and then once you have started them, even if you think you might be changing your mind, if you've started, you might as well finish it and see how you feel when it's done but just do be prepared that there will be things that you'll completely change your mind about. Especially if, like me, you end up with a lot of extra time to do the making and you're just sitting looking at it and thinking, I'm not really sure about that anymore. Even if you do change your mind multiple times, like I have, don't feel like it's been a waste of time. There could be times when you sit there and think, I've spent ages doing this and now I don't even like it. But that idea could morph into an even better idea or you'll have at least learned what you don't want or what you don't like. So it's never a waste of time. It's just helped you along the way to getting it looking how you really want it to. I won't go into any specifics, but as an example, there is at least maybe three things in the wedding that I'd made for our original wedding date that in the 18 months since I have completely changed my mind about. I've used bits of them to go into the new version that I've created, but the idea itself has completely changed. Now this did spark inspiration for some completely new ideas and it also meant I got to reuse some of the supplies that I'd used on the original ones. So it wasn't a waste of time and it wasn't a waste of the money or the supplies because it did get used and I'm 10 times happier with what I've ended up with than what I started with. So you will change your mind. I could almost guarantee that everyone will change their mind about something that they dream up for their wedding. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. On the subject of changing your mind, my tip number two would be to follow as many pages as you can to give you plenty of inspiration for all of your wedding DIYs. So Pinterest pages, Instagram pages, Facebook pages, find any websites that do like how to's for DIYs for weddings, even YouTube channels that show little like crafty ideas that could tie into your wedding somehow. Anywhere that you think you could find inspiration, even go old fashioned to get some wedding magazines. Anything that you think could inspire you and give you some ideas for your wedding, do as much of it as you can because you never know where you might get your best piece of inspiration from. Since I set up my wedding Instagram page in July last year, I have followed so many amazing wedding Instagram accounts. 
Some of them aren't intended to be for inspiration or ideas. Some of them are just people's personal accounts as mine is. But I've got so much inspiration and so many ideas from their pages. Possibly in a way too many because it's given me so many ideas for our wedding that it's probably cost a bit more money and took up a lot more time than I thought it would. But it has really made me enjoy the wedding planning process more, especially after all the postponing and it's really made the DIY side of the wedding so much more fun and I've got so many more interesting, fun, unique ideas for our wedding that I never would have had if I hadn't followed those Instagram pages. And you never know because inspiration can strike in the most unlikely places. There's people that I've followed on Instagram who were having completely different weddings to what we're having. Their theme was nothing like ours but even some of their ideas and some of the things they'd done for their wedding have made it into our wedding in some way or they've inspired something that I've put in our wedding. So don't discount something just because it doesn't exactly fit with your theme because it might still give you some really good ideas that are quite versatile in what themes they can apply to. Good afternoon everybody, it is now Wednesday. I told you this was gonna be a very choppy vlog. Uh, sorry about the background noise and sorry if you struggle to hear me. Apparently the weather has decided it's officially autumn and I'm surrounded by trees so it is quite loud with the wind. But I just thought I would drop in for another of my DIY wedding tips. Tip number three would be to buy more of everything than you think you will need when you're doing DIY or crafts for your wedding. As I said in previous tips, things will go wrong. So you're going to need more supplies than you expect to. And even if things don't go wrong, you might underestimate how much you need. I think I've ended up buying three more sets of white card, probably four or five more sets of the coloured card. I've had to buy more ink, more ribbon, more tape, more adhesive. Basically everything I've used for DIY, I've ended up buying more of. And you don't want to end up caught out where you're halfway through a project and you run out of something because there's nothing more frustrating than being really happy with how something's going and then you have to stop because you've run out of something. So even if it might cost you a little bit more money, it is worth buying that little bit extra just in case you need it. You can always make use of it somewhere else if you don't use it, or it might even be something that can be returned or you could sell it on to another bride or crafter. So I would definitely recommend buying more than you expect to need. It's just worth it for the peace of mind. So on the topic of buying more than you think you might need of all your supplies, that brings us on to my tip number four, which is to not get frustrated if things go wrong. Things will go wrong when you're doing crafts or DIY, that's just how it is. They won't turn out how you expect or you'll make a little mistake that you feel like it's ruined the whole thing. You might have to completely start again with some things, but try not to get too frustrated with it. I know there was a time when I was making our invitations and I was sure that I had double, triple checked all of my spellings and then when I'd got them all printed out, all of the different sections, the menu, the information, the actual invitation, the RSVP, started to put them all together and I noticed one spelling mistake on one of the pieces and I'd already printed all 50 copies. So I had to go back in change that spell and mistake, reprint all 50 of them. Luckily I hadn't got them all cut out and put together so I didn't have to do all of that again. But it did mean using more ink, more card, the time that it took to reprint all 50 of them. And I was so frustrated with myself because I was sure I had checked every spelling. I'd gone through each little bit, double checked, triple checked. I was convinced that there couldn't possibly be a mistake. And then when I got them all printed and I went to start cutting them out, I noticed the error. And I was so annoyed and it even made me wish that I wasn't bothering to make them myself, that I was just getting them professionally done because then maybe that wouldn't happen. But I pushed through, I pulled myself together, I corrected the mistake, got the invitations done and I was so, so happy with how our invitations ended up looking. I was really glad that I'd still made them myself. And yeah, I made that mistake. But as I said in my last tip, Luckily I'd bought plenty of card that I could reprint them without having to wait and order some more. But it is difficult not to get frustrated when things go wrong, but you just have to try and keep your eye on the bigger picture, know that it's going to be worth it when you get it finished and 
that that little bit of extra effort is just going to make it exactly how you want it to be and the feeling of finishing something especially when you've made a mistake and had to fix it the feeling of finally getting that finished and it being how you wanted it to be is a really satisfying feeling I was really proud of our invitations when I finished them especially considering all the work that had gone in because I'd had to fix that mistake that I was really really glad I'd done it so in a way making that mistake just made it all the better once it was done so yeah try not to get too frustrated with yourself or other people when things are going wrong that you're trying to do because it will happen and you've just got to push through it and get on with it strangely enough all of my tips seem to flow into one another because that also brings us on to tip number five and that is to not underestimate how much work you're taking on by deciding to do things DIY even for someone who enjoys art and enjoys crafting, for me it has been a lot of work and there has been times when I've wished I hadn't bothered and I'd just bought everything, even though it would probably cost more money and it maybe wouldn't have been as personal. Making everything that I've made has been a lot of work, it's took a lot of time, a lot of effort, it's mentally draining, I've got blisters on my hands from all the cutting. I've cut my hands, you end up with ink everywhere. You spend so much time cutting and sticking and printing. It is a lot and I think it's really easy to underestimate how much work it can be. You look at invitations and even the simplest of designs, you think, oh, that'll be easy. I'll just go for a really simple classic design. It won't take much doing. And then it takes a lot more doing than you think it's going to. And I've done quite a lot of the things for our wedding DIY. I've done all of the favours which were having multiple favours. I've done all of the stationery, so save the dates, invites, table names, place settings. I've had to do change of date cards with RSVPs for those because of our postponement due to Covid and it is a lot of work and that's without all of the decorative items that I've done, different pieces to go around, our venues, little extra things for the guests things for presents for the people in the wedding party. I've done a lot of it myself and it is a lot of work. I know that when it gets to the day and I see it all there and everyone gets their presents and the guests get their favours, I know that it'll 100% be worth it and I will be so pleased with how personal everything is and knowing that I've made everything and I've put all that work in to make our day exactly as we want it but I'm not gonna lie and say it's easy. It is frustrating, it is tiring. Mentally, it, it does take a lot out of you. And I know that sounds stupid because it's just crafts, but it does take a lot, especially like us when you've had to postpone and we've had to change a lot of dates on things. It is a lot, so don't go into it thinking it's gonna be really easy. It can be if you, you don't do a lot and you just do sort of little things, DIY. It can be really easy. But even the things that you think are going to be really simple aren't always as simple as the seem. So just be prepared that it can be a lot of work. Don't think it's going to be really easy to do your whole wedding DIY. Because chances are there'll be very few people who come out at the end of it saying, oh, that was easy. So just do be prepared that that might be the case. It's got quite a bit chillier since the last clip I filmed, so we've had to upgrade to a coat. Tip number six would be don't mix your themes. As tempting as it can be with all of the brilliant ideas out there and all of the wonderful inspiration that there is to just do everything that you see, it's important to remember not to just have everything because then it just all becomes one big mess. Try and pick even a general theme of how you want your DIYs to look and stick to that. You can always twist ideas that you see and try and help them fit your theme a little bit better if you really want them involved. But don't just shove a mismatch of everything into your wedding. Don't try and combine little pieces of every set of invitations that you see that you like because it'll end up just looking like one big mess. Being completely honest, that isn't actually my tip. That is a tip I saw someone put on Instagram not long after I set up my page but I couldn't agree more. It's so tempting when you see all of these nice things in magazines or Instagram pages 
even all the things you see being sold in places like Hobbycraft, to just think, oh yeah, I like that, oh I like that, oh I like that as well, and to just buy it all or make it all. But then you just end up with little pieces of everything and you don't have one proper theme and it just makes everything look a bit higgledy piggledy nothing really matches, nothing ties in. There isn't a, a cohesion among everything that you've made and as much fun as it probably is to do, it doesn't look that great. It ends up looking so much better if you pick one general theme and try and stick with that throughout. So if you go with candles for your centerpieces, stick with the candle idea. If you go with lanterns for your centerpieces, stick with the lantern idea. If you go with logs and a rustic theme, try and stick to that rustic theme throughout everything else that you do, rather than having some things that look rustic and some things that are really modern and up to date because it'll just clash completely. Tip number seven, and this is a good one for all of you budget conscious brides and grooms out there, and that is to shop around for all of your supplies for your wedding DIYs. Every single thing, compare prices everywhere until you find a price that you are happy with. So as exciting as it is when you get all these ideas and you just want to get started on them and you want to buy from the first place you see the supplies that you need so that you can just get on with it, it really does pay to shop around. I've seen lots of things in places like Hobbycraft, Dunelm, that I've then ended up getting on eBay or Amazon for a lot cheaper. I have found some really good sales in places like Hobbycraft and Dunelm, but it's definitely worth shopping around when you see something because there really is some bargains out there. A lot of things I've got off eBay, the card for our invitations, I got in a big bulk load off eBay. I did end up having to buy more, but I saved so much money on what I would have ended up spending if I'd bought it when I originally seen it in paper chase. So yeah, shop around, look for the best deals, Obviously, if budget isn't an issue and you just want to get on with it and make it, which is the fun part, then yeah, just go for it. But if you're a little bit more budget conscious, you're a little bit more focused on how much you're spending, if one of the reasons that you're wanting to DIY is to try and save on the costs a little bit, then definitely shop around. But I do know how exciting it can be when you get the ideas and you just want to get working on them, that you really just want to click buy in the first place that you see things. But bookmark it, make a note of it, Write it down in your wedding planner if you've got one and shop around, look for the best deal and you really will save a fortune. So tip number eight is to sign up to as many newsletters, subscribe to as many websites that do craft supplies, art supplies, anything that you think might be useful for your DIY projects for your wedding. Sign up to all of the newsletters because that's how you get all the special offers through. So I've had special offers come through for Paper Chase, Hobbycraft, Ryman, The Works. I've even had offers coming through for purchases on eBay and Amazon. Anything that you can sign up to that might help you save a little bit of money, definitely click that button. I know a lot of people worry that if they sign up to these newsletters, they're going to get bombarded with emails. And in for some websites, that is the case, which is why it can also be a good idea to set up a dedicated email box for your wedding. So then you've got all of your supplier related emails and all of the things like newsletters and discount codes going to one place. It doesn't clog up your email inbox and you know where they all are if you ever need to find them. I also ended up making notes of any discount codes with their expiry dates in the back of my wedding planner. So if the time came where I thought, oh, I need to get some of this for this project, I could have a look on the website, see where I could get it from at a good price and then have a look in my planner to see if I had any discount codes for that website or that shop. I know that sounds like a really simple one and you're probably thinking, well, you don't tend to save that much money anyway, but even if you just save five, 10% on most of the things that you're buying, over the course of doing everything for your wedding, it definitely does add up and saving a little bit is better than saving nothing. So yeah, tip number eight, sign up to all those newsletters and get all of the discounts. Tip number nine, don't feel like you have to DIY everything. I know there's a lot of people who, if they've decided to do one project themselves, like say the invitations, they feel like that means they need to then do everything themselves. 
and they take on too much work, too much pressure and they end up not enjoying it. If you want to do everything and you're going to enjoy it and you're doing it because you actually really want to, then brilliant, that's what I've done. Nearly everything that could be made myself, has made myself and for the most part I have really enjoyed it. But if you're just doing it because you feel like you need to, because you've done one thing yourself or you think, oh well I, when I've done that myself, what if I can't find anything else that fits in with the theme I've started by creating it myself? You will always find things that will fit in with your theme, whatever it is. If you look in the right places, you will find it. So don't feel that pressure to do everything yourself. And even if you do want to DIY, that doesn't mean you have to do it all just you. Ask for help from people. If you have friends or family members that are particularly crafty, they can be a massive help. Even people who aren't, things like packing things up or organising supplies, finding good deals, people can be a help. You don't have to do it all on your own and you don't have to do it all. There's lots of places online, little small businesses that it's great to support that if you send them your ideas or send them a photo of something you've created that you would like to expand on for your wedding, there's so many good suppliers out there that are really flexible and will take on custom designs. So even if you have a really good idea and you've created one version of it, but you don't have the time or the patience to be able to do them all, send a photo of it to a supplier and see if it's something that they think they could do. Because chances are, more often than not, they will be so grateful for the business and they will be totally open to taking on custom designs. Good morning everybody. So it is now Friday and I thought I'd better jump on and just do my last of my top 10 tips because I need to get this edited to hopefully go up on Sunday for you. So with that being said, after all the do's and don'ts in my last tips, my final tip, number 10, is just to enjoy the process. So if you've chosen to do any kind of DIY for your wedding, You've obviously chosen to do it because you want to, because it's the kind of thing you enjoy, because you want to make it more personal, or even just because you want to save a bit of money. You've obviously chosen to do it because you want to do it. So just enjoy it. It is a really fun process, seeing the things that you imagine and dream up come into life, and that feeling of satisfaction when you finally complete the little project that you've been working on. If at any point you find yourself not enjoying it, just take a break, step back, think about what you're wanting to do and why you're not enjoying it anymore and then when you feel like you want to, pick it up again. I know obviously in my situation our wedding planning process has gone on a lot longer than we anticipated that it would. So there has been times throughout the last sort of 12 to 18 months where I've got a bit down about it and thought I can't be bothered doing this anymore. There's too much work needs to be done. I've come up with too many ideas. I don't know if I like this anymore. So I took a step back. I completely switched off from wedding planning even for a few months when we first postponed. And then I went back to it when I felt like I wanted to and I have enjoyed it so much more since then. I'm still really enjoying it. I've still got things I'm working on for our wedding and I am absolutely loving the process again of doing all of these little DIY bits. So yeah. Tip number 10, just enjoy the process. And that is it, we have reached the end of this video. If you've stuck around to the end, thank you very much. I know it's been a bit of a jumpy, stop starty, different locations video, but it has meant it's been so much easier for me to film and I've actually managed to get it done when I've been putting it off for at least six months. So yeah, thank you for watching this one. I hope you'll come back to see the next one, which should be in about another week's time. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I know small YouTubers like myself really do appreciate it when we get another subscriber or an extra view, an extra like on a video. It does mean so much. So thank you all for the support so far on my videos and it really does mean a lot to me. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.